The president at the time, George W. Bush, recently told a German publication that the uh, decision to withdraw from Afghanistan was a mistake. Do you share that assessment? And if so, why or why not? Well, I, you know, the decision is the decision of the president of the United States, and it's well within his authority to do that. And whether it's a mistake or not, I think maybe history will uh, will, uh, will will make a determination of that. I, from my own perspective here, um, you know, the uh, this is a, I mean, it's a difficult, I'm sure this is a very difficult decision for our president to make. Uh, uh, you know, my, my personal perspective is, is that I, I think we have national interests uh, at stake in Afghanistan. Uh, having influence in this part of the world, I think, is very, very important for us. Uh, and we certainly have, uh, you know, security concerns there. We've had a long-term partnership with the, with the Afghan security forces, and I do think it was, you know, one of the one of the options available to us, as opposed to pulling all of our forces out, was to maintain a small presence on the ground uh, where we could protect our counterterrorism interests and maintain our relationship more directly with, uh, with the Afghan forces. We went through this in Iraq in 2011, and we chose to step away, and we found out what happened there. So I, I have a tendency to look at this through the lens of, of our experience in Iraq and, and our eventual return here just a couple of years after our departure. Do you think that the the over the horizon uh, plan to support Afghan forces will work? Well, I, I don't I don't know if it is. I don't really know exactly what the plan is that is put together. What I would just share with you, Howard, is that over the horizon operations are are are, are challenging to conduct in, in any in any situation, and it's even more so in a place like Afghanistan. We don't have uh, a lot of countries on the periphery. Uh, in the immediate periphery of Afghanistan that are willing to base and host and host uh, you know, U.S. or coalition forces, much less support operations into Afghanistan from it. So what it what it means is that we have to operate from from a further distance, from perhaps bait from you know maritime platforms or bases in the uh, in the Gulf. And and th that what that means is it means just getting to Afghanistan is a significant operation in and of itself. And, and then you have to actually do things on the ground. So it's it's certainly not impossible, but there are a lot of, of challenges that have to be overcome. And uh, when you try to do what I, what I think we might need to do at scale, that is support the Afghan forces in a variety of locations around uh, around uh, around the country of Afghanistan, which is a large country, uh, then I think the challenge is even more exacerbated. So it's not not impossible, but it's certainly not simple, and uh, and there are uh, you know a variety of challenges uh, to to doing this. The uh, given the internal struggles in Afghanistan, internal political struggles and logistical issues, and people taking bribes, do, do you think that the uh, Afghan national security forces uh, can hold out against the Taliban, which, who have been making tremendous gains across the country. Well, you know, I, I know I, I I recognize we've seen some reporting here recently. It indicates we've seen forces going across the border into the Central Asian states, and we've seen attacks on on Afghan special operations forces and things like that, and, and resulting in casualties. I guess my my assessment is this: is that there are there are good, there are good and reliable Afghan forces, and there are those that are not as good and reliable. I, I believe the Afghan special operations capability, uh, one that I'm very familiar with, I think they are good forces. I think they are generally very well led. Some of the Afghan corps uh, will do the same. Some will not do as well because they're not as well led. But again, they are dependent upon logistical support and maintenance support and other things uh, from uh, from the U.S. and coalition partners. And so when that goes away, then I do think there'll be some diminishment of that. So, you know, I think it's very, it's, it's uneven. <clears throat> I think you'll see that some forces will well and, and honorably uh, to defend themselves and others will, will, will not do that. Um, so I think it's going to be very much a mixed bag. Was the U.S. military involvement in Afghanistan a success or a failure and why? President Trump's strategy, one that I operated under for the 
for the remnants of my time in service, you know, was aimed at achieving a political reconciliation between the government of Afghanistan and the Taliban. And as a result of that, you know, would, that would be a, uh, uh, a platform on which we could determine what our future relationship and presence was. You know, we did not achieve that objective. We don't have political reconciliation. So I think from a strategic um, standpoint, we did not achieve that objective. And uh, uh, you know, so you know that doesn't look like a that doesn't look like a win for us. That said, I you know in in my my view, uh, from you know my experience of 20, 2001 through 2019, my observation of how the U.S. military performed there, uh, our units on the ground, I think they did what was asked of them. Uh, while we had uh, you know a variety of different strategies and approaches here that ultimately didn't lead to the strategic objective that we were looking for. Uh, that doesn't mean they did not operate honorably uh, and fight uh, as, uh, as the American people would expect that they did. So, you know, I think, uh, you know, this may be another example where we, where we had tactical uh, victories on the ground, but they didn't add up to a strategic, uh, strategic success that we were actually looking for. Joe, as, as a commander, as a father, as a military man, what's your message to the uh, folks who lost loved ones during this 20 years of conflict and the many who, uh, you know, were uh, wounded as a result of the service? You know, the sacrifices of those we lost and those that were wounded were, uh, were noble sacrifices. They were made in good faith. Uh, for a noble effort that we undertook in Afghanistan that has unfortunately not turned out, not, not turned out strategically how we hoped that it would. But that does not diminish in any way the sacrifices that were made by those service members or their families. And would not want any of them to think that this was all done in vain. It was not. They served honorably uh, and nobly in, uh, you know, at a time when our nation was calling for them to serve. And, and I think that's the most important thing that, uh, that, we, that, that I would try to convey to them. I hope that, I hope that that's the way that they feel.